So I guess the first issue is where did this whole idea of the movement system really uh, come from? And uh, I can say that in part, in my thinking, it was so often being asked the question, so what is physical therapy? And hearing other people that were in political positions and should be knowledgeable not be able to answer that question. And because um, so, it was really hard to describe. And then I think the other precipitating factors for, for me anyway were uh, I sort of thought that when I started work as a physical therapist that I was kind of like a medical cheerleader and the doctor understood the problem and would tell me what to do and I would just carry it out. I didn't have to work too long before it became really pretty clear that what the doctor was mainly concerned about was not exactly what I was concerned about. I was concerned about how people moved. So that kind of put in place that I was interested in the movement part, he was interested in the patho-anatomical problems that were, were present. So uh, then in about 1975, Helen Hislop, also recognizing this lack of a definable body of knowledge, uh, had this famous uh, Mary McMillan address where she suggested pathokinesiology. Well, that term was worked over by many important people, including Steve Rose, who uh, was so uh, uh, influential in this particular program when he directed it. And uh, he sponsored a conference, and they, they talked about it, but it always seemed to be somewhat limiting when you always had pathology in, in front of kinesiology. And then particularly if we were going to do anything that spoke to normal movement rather than just movement induced by a pathology. And then it also became clear and clear that movement could induce pathology, not just pathology induce faulty movement. So uh, after Steve's sort of untimely and early death, a, a group of people got together and to kind of talk about the directions that he had set but never been able to see uh, to, to fruition. And uh, in the midst of much discussion, some of it more funny than intellectual, uh, we came up with the idea of the movement system which seemed to address um, the, uh, that this could be normal, not just abnormal. And the other thing that appealed to me in particular about the movement system is that the, the advantage of identifying it for a body system. Uh, it, it was so clear and I, uh, uh, that when you have someone with recognized professional expertise, it's because they're identified with a system of the body. The, I like to use the example of the neurologist or the cardiologist. You know what they are doing, what they care about. And even the dentist has an advantage because he's taking care of the oral cavity or the podiatrist, the foot. But you say physical therapy, and it's only about treatment. So I think to, to widen the perspective, to give you a, an inroad into that you can understand the workings of a system and a body system, you need a name for that system. And what could be better than movement? Because... And I, what I think is so appealing about movement is it ranges from whether it's air going through lungs, insulin through membranes, or man moving in his environment. So no matter what level of the organism, movement is essential. And then it encompasses and influences so many other of our physiological systems. So that's what we do. That's what we seem to be perfect about. And now we just have to carry on letting people know that there is a movement system and that it has widespread application.